We appreciate every time you view the channel. This is River Street Marketing. Your host, Preston Olson, with current events and major headlines. We'd like you to check out the Facebook page at River Street Marketing. We're on SoundCloud, River Street Podcast, iTunes, River Street Podcast. Thank you again for joining us. We're going to keep having fresh content, new material out for you. Other than that, thank you very much for listening. We appreciate every one of your views. Give us a comment. Give us some feedback. Tell us what you want to see in a video. We'll make it happen. House Bill 2353 and Senate Bill 316. Fostering these two bills are Illinois State Senator Heather Steens, Democrat out of Chicago, and Illinois State Representative Kelly Cassidy, Democrat out of Chicago as well. Now, spoiler alert, neither one of these bills are going to be brought up in this next session, the House session and the Senate session. You're looking at the latest for these two bills to hold a vote is going to be late summer, more than likely July, August, uh, before it's time for our elected officials to take their next vacation. Um, that would be around that time this year. It's important we break these bills down one by one. Um, we'll take a look at Illinois Senate Bill 316 first. Here's a quote from Heather Steens herself. Legalizing and taxing marijuana will not and should not solve all of our budget woes, but it should be a part of the conversation about resolving Illinois' worsening budget problems. Every bit of new revenue will help to close the governor's $5 billion budget gap. She says, source abc7chicago.com, you see it down there to the lower right. She makes a very valid point. That's very hard to argue because once you step into that role of governor, now you're filling those shoes of whatever shortfalls have occurred before you under Pat Quinn, under Blagojevich. Um, there's really... Not much to counter here um, coming from the conservative side, coming from the right wing um, and the Illinois Republicans themselves know that it's an uphill battle and it's going to continue to be. Um, and this would be groundbreaking to find a happy medium with this particular Senate bill. On a side note, Senator Steens points out that the data collected in Oregon shows more than $60 million in new tax revenue from the sale of marijuana. And Colorado, which legalized recreational marijuana in 2012, collected more than $140 million in 2016 from legal marijuana sales. Folks, this is a cash crop, and the state should be looking at it like that. As the Caesar of Colorado's marijuana program, Barbara Brawl says she's neither pro nor anti-pot, but she believes the legal market for this drug is eating into the black market. Funding drug abuse treatment and prevention and providing a safer product. The roughly $200 million in tax revenue from more than $1 billion in sales Last year, she says that provides $40 million for the schools in Oregon. Brohl spoke not too long ago on Wednesday to a panel of Illinois lawmakers considering a proposal to make marijuana use legal in the state. While sponsors say 
this bill won't get a vote this legislative session. They are beginning a series of hearings on how to craft said law. As proposed, the law would allow possession of up to one ounce of pot by people 21 and over. Driving under the influence would remain illegal and smoking in public would be prohibited. Quote, prohibition doesn't work, end quote, State Senator Heather Stearns, a Chicago Democrat, said. Taxing and regulating pot, she said, would create jobs and generate an estimated, here's the big number, $350 million to $700 million a year in tax revenues for the debt-ridden state. The hearing generated some hard feelings by marijuana opponents who weren't allowed to testify. Riverside Police Chief Tom Weitzel represented the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police, which oppose the measure. No surprise there. I don't know why they didn't reach out before this and ask for our opinion and see if there's some compromise, he said. Because our officers are the ones doing the enforcement. Mm -hmm. Sponsors said opponents and advocates would have ample opportunity to testify at future hearings. There you go. Bro, who heads Colorado's Department of Revenue, said there are about 3,000 licensed marijuana businesses in her state, about half medical, half recreational. License holders undergo extensive background checks. She said individuals are allowed to grow up to six plants for their own use. Some Republican lawmakers on the panel expressed concerns about public safety and how the industry operates largely with cash because federal regulations discourage normal banking and credit card use. So literally, people run around with bags full of money. That's a real thing down there. Peter Bensinger, a former administration of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, cited federal statistics showing marijuana use among teenagers initially increased 20% in the first two years after legalization in Colorado compared with the two years prior. Also, seeing, and, and this is just a side note from the headlines here, you're also seeing an increase in people younger, getting older, and more of them. Um, so, you know, let's 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 keep that in there. Bensinger also cited a near doubling of emergency department visits and an increase in traffic deaths related to marijuana. Not just marijuana; it's also bad driving. It's also uh, even stated that you should not get behind the wheel and be high, plain and simple. But a more recent and much larger state survey found that the use among teens was essentially unchanged. And Brawl said the increase in hospital visits uh, may be related to a greater willingness to admit use. Marijuana remains illegal under federal law. The Obama administration generally allowed state marijuana programs to operate while Officials under President Donald Trump have signaled they are open to medical, um, you know, marijuana, which is legal in Illinois for those who qualify, unless you're on disability, and then they'll cut you off for that, but not recreational use. The hearing came the day before April 20th, when some marijuana users smoke in public gatherings in support of legalization. Move forward to this slide, Illinois House Bill 2353. Just to put them both up to each other, both next to each other, and basically tell you the most important parts of this here. Not where the tax revenue goes because there's already uh, things for medical marrow in the medical marijuana bill that are in place for the tax revenue to go to the police departments, the lottery, the school systems, so on and so forth. What we have here is three key points that both bills include. Um, one of the main key points is this aims to legalize recreational marijuana statewide up to 28 grams more than enough that's an ounce folks for those who don't know how to convert um, i will also tell you that the second point here is to tax it and allow businesses to distribute it with a license like alcohol sounds like common sense very important how old do you have to be well the legal age is going to be 21 and up if they do get these two bills on the floor and passed. 
um, with a full passage of these bills, uh, both of these you would see uh, revenue and shortfalls slowly start to disappear uh, and anticipating, uh, like I do believe, our uh, economy here in Illinois is going to bounce back. It will be rejuvenated. Um, we're just going through a slow process right now. Now, the critics are all over this. On this slide, I'm going to narrow down the backlash that you're going to see when it comes to legalizing recreational marijuana full scale. Uh, critics not only say there is not enough footwork put in for an ultimate passage of these two bills. No, not only that, but the skeptics proclaim that marijuana is a gateway drug plus much worse. Folks, this is a real battle. There's very few things like this when it comes to agriculture, when you're actually battling a cash crop, something that could help the state big league. What we have here is people that are scared to try something different uh, and they don't have to use this. They don't have to do this just like people drink in front of you, people smoke cigarettes in front of you, and I'm talking about drinking alcohol, we're not asking to smoke weed in front of them. We're asking to not be criminally prosecuted for having this plant. Law in Illinois. This is where it can get hairy for a lot of people, very tricky. Many people fail to actually look at the law and what laws are, so I made it easy for you. Possession of 10 grams or less constitutes as a civil violation with is a maximum of a $200 fine. Sales or trafficking, 2.5 grams or less, that's a misdemeanor, maximum six months, including up to a $1,500 fine. Cultivation, five plants or less, Misdemeanor, one year with maximum sentence, including up to $2,500. Penalties for hashish are the same as they are for marijuana. Misdemeanor, one year possession of paraphernalia with more than 10 grams of marijuana. Possible $2,000. $500 fine at a maximum sentence. So folks, you can find this on normal.org laws, Illinois, and you could find any of the marijuana laws for your state on normal.org. They're all there. They do a great job on listing them. I would encourage you to look at them, know exactly what it is in your state you're allowed to do. How much you're allowed to have? Are you allowed to cultivate? Um, this is a big deal to be informed and not just falsely believe. Going to get into something else now. Um, this is the basic federal law on marijuana. Despite medical cannabis laws in 44 states, cannabis is still illegal under federal law. The federal government claims that marijuana is not medicine and in Gonzalez v. Rach 2005, the United States Supreme Court held that the federal government has a constitutional authority to prohibit marijuana for all purposes. Thus, federal law enforcement officials may prosecute medical marijuana patients even if they grow their own medicine and even if they reside in a state where medical marijuana use is protected under state law. Decisions about prosecution are still left 
to the discretion of the federal government, recognized as a Schedule One drug, meaning as dangerous as LSD, it is not legal federally for recreational use. And marijuana continued. Today, several federal agencies have issued guidelines and other policy memorandums that are legitimate efforts to manage the emerging issues within medical marijuana. In fact, as of 2016, every federal agency except the Drug Enforcement Administration has stopped ignoring medical cannabis. Starting with the 2009 Ogden Memo and later the 2013 by Deputy Attorney General James Cole, the Department of Justice has made clear that state legal medical marijuana is not a priority. In 2010, the VA updated their policies to no longer deny veterans access to medical services due to their participation in a state legal medical marijuana program. In 2014, the Treasury Department issued guidelines to facilitate banking in the marijuana industry. So folks, believe it or not, as we progress through the days, through the weeks, the months, then the years, this has became more known and they would not push this on a federal level to even uh, be able to, for just something veterans can have. Now you're looking at veterans being able to have this. You're looking at uh, people with cancer, terminal illnesses, diseases. You're allowed to have this. You can still be cut off disability for having medical marijuana card and buying and purchasing medical marijuana. So there's still a lot of work to do. But the footwork, the groundwork, it is there. We just need a bigger push and a bigger full-scale effort. That's why I made this video. Everybody likes statistics. So let's get into medical marijuana. Now, total pot sales reach $5.4 billion in 2015. Total pot sales then reached $6.7 billion in 2016. That's a 30% increase in profits, my friends. That's a big deal. If it doesn't get any bigger than billions of dollars, you're talking trillions of dollars, which 30% increase, as long as this continues, more states get involved, this total sales number is going to go up. And this year, it's been predicted to be much bigger. And that is a real deal. So the money's there. Um, it is no longer a question of, is it profitable? Um, it's definitely a lucrative business. Ask anybody in it. But states that are hurting, like our beautiful state of Illinois, would do nothing but benefit from having licensed businesses sell pot and having the government regulate it, tax it, distribute it rightfully and in moderation. You would have a short-term solution, but a long-term plan. In my opinion, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and finish off with this and make sure to check out the web store, riverstmarketing.com. The first thing Illinois needs to do is fully legalize marijuana and open up hemp factories. The conservative and right wing backlash to this is that Illinois needs to pass a budget, but that's been going on for over three years with nothing but deadlock. And in Governor Bruce Rauner's words, stunning failure. On the other hand, this proposed bill for full legalization of marijuana has not been going on for three years, along with the effort 
and support of the majority of Illinoisans. This is capitalism and taking away from the black market. What's not to love? Alcohol, cigarettes, gambling, strip joints are all alive and well here in Illinois, but the rebuttal from the marijuana opposition is it's bad for you. New study, and this is big, new study and new research reveals marijuana helps you remember things. So I hope they're listening out there. I hope somehow they stumbled across this video. Listen up. It doesn't take a lot to remember that we're in debt and it's eating us up. Folks, thanks for listening. RiverSTMarketing.com, Facebook.com slash River Street Marketing, Instagram.com slash River Street Marketing, iTunes. Check out the River Street Podcast. I will have another video up for you this week. Stay tuned and thanks again. Hit that subscribe button.